Where does our list stand holistically in the grand scheme of the rankings when it comes to best to worst? So we're going to look at that today by way of a tier list. We're going to look at the entire list and rank them through multiple different categories. We start with the bottom tier being the Jack Madden tier. If you know, you know. And then you've got disappointing, consistent, above average, top 50 in the league, and then you've got the Buckley tier. So essentially, these, these ratings or rankings will be based on this year's performance, and that is pretty much the premise of this video. So let's get right into it. Let's have a look here. Let's start with, let's get people in each tier. So we have a gauge. Who is in the Jack Madden tier? There can only be one man. <laughs> only one man, Jack Madden. Okay. That's easy. Who was disappointing? I would put Isaac Quainor in disappointing. I think that's relatively fair. We really took a step back and in a year where he was promoted into the leadership team after the flag, you could argue there was probably things where, am I? Yep, I've got, good, we got volume. All right, awesome. Yeah, it's a year where you probably would have wanted him to step up a little bit more and, and overcome some of the adversities, but he did struggle, but still relatively young and maybe just adjusting to what it's like to go out into the league as a winner from the previous season. Uh, let me close this door because it's going to be banging on us the whole time. Close that, thank you. And we're back and we're in focus. Cool. All right. So that's disappointing. Who was consistent? I think, where's where's Mr. Consistent himself? It'd be, be rude, rude of us not to put Hoskin Elliott in this category. He owns this category. And you know what? Let's, let's fucking, can we change this? Let's fucking, let's change this to the the hyphen tier, yeah? Let's call it hyphen, because that he owns that, right? Above average, who had an above average season? This is this is where it gets difficult. I'm going to say Jack Crisp. Particularly when we had all those players out in that middle part of the season, I thought Jack Crisp was playing like a top 50 player in the AFL and then reduced back to the role that he serves for the Collingwood Football Club. So he's the type of player where he'll sacrifice his role, much like Hoskin Elliott. He is Mr. Consistent in the above average category. So once again, let's have a bit of fun. Let's change this to the crisp tier. Just consistently above average, right? That's, that's that tier. That's where Jack Crisp belongs. And he could be a top 50 or near, nearing on a top 50 player if he had the keys to the engine room and played midfield every week. But he sacrifices his role for the betterment of players like Jordan Dugowie. Did he have a top 50 season? No, because of injuries. Let's get... Where's the other man? The other obvious one. Where is he? I'm looking for you, big big dog. Where's Book? Booker, top 50, 100%. In the All-Australian Final 44, didn't make the, the squad. They only went with one Ruckman and probably would have fallen short behind Tristan Cherry. But, God, wasn't he unbelievable? Incredibly consistent. I, I have not seen... A better year from the man and just super consistent. We call him the the best intercepting marking Ruckman in the league when it comes to intercepts, contested marks. He was your guy. And I really hope he can, with next year, with Cox healthy, I'm hoping he can swing through that forward line a little bit more to play that third key tall forward and really impact the scoreboard and average a goal a game. Where someone like Mason Cox has done that in the past where he's managed to average a goal a game while pinch hitting in a ruck. So... Top 50 for Darcy Cameron, and who is in, well, it's obvious who's in Buckley tier, that's that's Nick Dacos, he had a Buckley type of season, and you know what, I would make it the Dacos tier, but just because he's so early in his young career, I didn't want to give him too much of a pump up, I don't want to blow his tyres up too much, so that's where Nick Dacos belongs, there's no no ifs, ands, or buts about it, hopefully he wins the Brownlow, and maybe next year when we do this tier list again, we can call this the Dacos tier, okay? Moving on, now, let's go with Coxie. I think Coxie was consistent, particularly coming back into this, the team after his injury against Fremantle, it was, or the Doggies, and he played with a, a partially torn ACL. So just off the back of that, there was one game towards the back end of the year where he had five contested marks. It may have been against Sydney, perhaps, or Brisbane, and he was he was unreal, and I really underestimated how important Cox was to our structure, and I noticed that when he was out. And I also noticed that Kruger cannot fulfill the same duties that Cox upholds for Collingwood when he's in the side. 
Jamie Elliott was a it was a hyphen type of year for him. I think he started. He will probably probably put him here where he started. He had that really good game against Brisbane, and then the injuries. So I'm going to put him in the hyphen year. He, he sort of fell off towards the back end of the inch. Probably struggled to come back from that foot injury, and probably overcame the odds to get back into the season at all. Really, with that injury. All right, Ash Johnson. You can go straight into Jack Madden. He's got one more year on his contract, so he's going to have another crack. Hopefully, he has a good off-season slash pre-season. I think it's all here, all in here for the man. And if this year was tough to break into the team, it's going to be even more difficult next year if we get Membry or Jake Stringer. Reef McInnes, does he get even better? Like, It's going to be tough. It's an uphill battle for Ash Johnson. And I think if he is to remain at the team and doesn't get traded away for peanuts, then, or if he requests a trade, I think it's going to be a tough one for him. Patrick Lipinski had a hyphen year. He had a really good first half to his season, kicked those four goals against Port Adelaide as a career high, was looking really good when he was coming off that wing, and then was shifted around, played more, I would argue, played more forward line in the second half of the year and probably hindered his his output. But we did notice he runs a serious amount when it when he plays in that that high half forward role. And it was the Sydney game where he had clocked up close to 16 kilometers and it was the top 20 most distance covered in a game. So while he doesn't always get the ball in that role and finds himself, finds it difficult for himself to impose himself in that role, he's definitely doing all the dog work, all the shuttle runs. And, and I tell you what, running up and down that wing as a high half forward, he'd probably be a fat side forward. So when the ball is on the left side, he's usually on the, the other side on the wing. And typically, it's probably just doing shuttle runs, hoping that the ball comes out that way and sometimes doesn't work out that way. Jack, Charlie Dean, call it harsh. I think it was a relatively disappointing season for Charlie Dean. In saying that, I have faith that he could... He's going to have to show a bit next season. I really do think he's going to have to show a bit because this year will give him, we'll give him the, the benefit of the doubt. But I'm still questioning whether he is capable at AFL level. And the thing is, he is more than competent at VFL level. So it's one of those ones where, can he make the transition? That's the only question that needs answering next year. Braden Maynard. I will, look, honestly, bordering between these two. The second half of the year, he was up and down. But I think for the most part, consistent enough. And he's a hyphen type of player. He's probably somewhere here when it comes to how consistent he is, right? So he's probably second behind Hyphen Elliott, Hyphen Elliott, Hoskin Elliott in this category. Josh Carmichael, we won't list him, obviously forced, retired. Jack Bytel, I'm going to give him, I'll give him a hyphen, right? If there was a tier between here and here, but on the basis that he only played a handful of games, I'm going to put him there and leave it at that. Does he make it to next year? I'm not too sure. Does he get rookie listed, delisted? Who knows? Same thing with TJ. I'm going to put him in the hyphen category. You know what? I might even make another tier. Let's go add a row below. And let's just write untested. I think that will be fair. So let's go. I still I still argue Jack Bytel is a little bit untested. And I... Nah, I'm still going to leave Charlie Dean in disappointing. I'm just going to have to do that. Moving on, Ed Allen, we'll put him in consistent. Had that really good game in that game against Melbourne. We shifted a lot of magnets to get him in the midfield. We put Jack Crisp onto the wing and we pushed Isaac Quainor back into the back line after playing on the wing. You could argue untested, but I think because he showed so much in that game against Melbourne, I think he deserves a, a hyphen spot. Phil A. McRae, disappointing and unsure of what his future looks like right now. My check, another hyphen year. He's always a lock for two goals a game every year. So a bunch of soft tissues, pec injury, hamstring, really held him back this year, unfortunately. But man, that forward line is looking delicious next year with My check, McStay, whoever that third key tall forward is, if it's Stringer, memory, who knows? It's going to be powerful. Jeremy Howe had a hyphen year. I'd probably put him, if we want to rank them, because there's so many here, I would put Jeremy Howe here. He, he, no, no, that's a lie. I'm going to put him here. I think at the start of the year, defensively, he was a bit all at sea, much like the rest of our defense. But I think we'd put him here. 
and then maybe my check there. Nah, Lipinski there. No, lies, lies. Come on, here we go. Bobby Hill had a crisp type of year, so just above average, and was cons I would say consistently above average. I think he's got so much left in the tank. This guy, like, a he tried to do a bit too much this year, but I think now with that experience and understanding when to do a, a bit more than what you probably should, I think taking that into next year, he could be a top fifty player in the league. I I don't. <laughs> He's a, he's a premier forward, a small forward in the league, but I wouldn't say he's a top 50 player in the league just yet. But he's, he's on the precipice of it. He's daring. He's daring to do these ones. You know what I mean? Uh, guys, that is Josh Eyre, untested. We'll put Carmichael there, untested. Aiden Begg, untested and delisted, unfortunately. Big Rue, same. Sullivan, dis... God, you guys are going to hate me for this, but I'm going to put him here. So... Close to consistent, but I would say disappointing. I think as the game's worn on him, his decision-making and composure was his kryptonite in this year. Can he change that next year? I'm not too sure. But I'm going to have high standards for someone who comes in from the VFL as a multiple league BNF, and at the age of 26, 27, you probably need to be here at that age and that that. that time of your career. You can't be letting the team down and holding us back at, at that age. Kruger, I'm, I really want to put him at untested. I really do. I think just a lack of consistency with injuries and that might be the one thing that holds him back from remaining at the club, really. He didn't play against Melbourne when we didn't have Majacek or Mick Stay. We played Darcy Cameron and Mason Cox forward. It's going to be a shame if we let go of this man. I was a big fan of him. Oleg Markov, I'm going to put him in disappointing. Really disappointing, but not as disappointing as Finlay McRae. A real, real decrease in his output relative to last year. And it's going to take a lot for him to get back into the best 23 next year with that amount of halfback flankers that are up and coming, such as someone like maybe even Jacob Ryan, who is untested. John Noble is going to be likely gone, but he was a hyphen, and I think he was pretty good this year. I'll put him here, third best in line when it comes to how... Mm, I think he was better than Maynard, I really do. In the grand scheme of things, I really think Noble had, had done a job this year. I'm going to put the goalie in hyphen, because he had some really big games and had some really disappointing games. I'm going to put him here, despite just because he had to nurse injuries while he was playing. So he wasn't playing injury-free either, and was severely hampered, so... Considering the circumstances, the big game he had against Adelaide, had a couple more big games, Gold Coast late in that in that second half as well, so I'll put him there for now. Ned Long, I will put him at the back of consistent. I thought he had some a couple of really good games relative to the role that he plays for the club, tackling and whatnot. I think Will Parker was really promising and has given us a spark of optimism if Noble does leave. Can Will Parker fulfill that role? Category B rookie, playing a couple games this year. Fly and the coaching panel clearly see something in this guy. So I'm going to believe in that. And I think Will Parker has a really good opportunity next year. Mick Stay was really good. For the games he played, I thought he was in that above average and just behind these two lads. And pretty pretty damn keen to see what he can put up for us next year in an, 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 in an injury-free season. Demetia, untested. Harvey Harrison was good. He was consistent. Probably put him... Probably put him there. Yeah, probably put him there amongst the, the hyphens. Uh, and ACL, super unfortunate. Still side bottom will be... I'll probably put him... He's had some good games, but he had some stinkers. But he finally found his role in the back end of that year. I'm going to put him... I put him here. I think there was some really good games where he was really important, like that North Melbourne game in that second half when he locked down on. I think he, he, oh, he didn't lock down LDU, but he was playing in the midfield and played a good role. Bo McCreary, when he came back from injury late in that year, was was really good. I'll probably put him here. Uh, sorry, just about there. I think I'm gonna put Lippy, Lippy here. I feel like I'm doing him dirty. Yeah, I'm gonna put him there. Nah, I'm gonna put him. I'm gonna put him ahead of Sadi. Go on. Have it at me. Have it at me in the comment section. 
Uh, where are we at? 15 minutes. So, Bo, Bo was really good in that back end of the year. He was tried in the midfield earlier, had a, had a concussion, calf injury, a bit of inconsistency. Much like the rest of our team, guys. When you look at how many injuries we had to deal with throughout the year, we've done well. We've done well. Darcy Moore, we'll put him disappointing, probably here. More disappointing than Q, but not as disappointing as Charlie Dean. Nah, that's a lie. But he bounced back in the last five games, so I trust that he'll get back to the form that he needs to be at to lead the club. Steen, untested. Lockie Schultz. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll put, him, I'll put him here. I'll put him here. Give him benefit of the doubt. Give him another year. See how he goes. Adjusting to the new environment, the Melbourne bubble that is, the Collingwood Football Club, coming into a stacked forward line, finding your, your place. Give him another year. Pendles. Put him crisp, and I'll put him just behind. No, I thought I. I think he was really good. He was really good. Pendles for his age, the things he was doing that Adelaide game, that first quarter. Wow, even the game against Carlton in his four hundredth, like he's just timeless. He's just timeless. Tom Mitchell injured, so untested. That's Joe Richards. We'll put Joe Richards. I know it was minimal games, but we're probably going to put him here, aren't we? We're going to put him third in line, and man, it's going to be a shame if we lose this, lose this bloke. Going to be a shame if we're losing to Port. Reef was probably somewhere here. Probably put you here, buddy. Yeah, I'll probably put you, yeah. Yeah. Average nearly two goals a game. Really limited game time when he was playing. Played the sub many times. And Josh Dacos will be a top 50 player. Played well on the wing. Moved to the half back line. And really, he's just nailed down that spot. So, only one player in the Buckley tier. But you need a lot of these players, right? And you can argue the goal is usually here. Usually here, but relative to the season, not so much. Same with Jamie Elliott. He's usually here. So look, this is what our team normally, I would say, could look like if we're fit and firing. Uh, I could put Jamie Howe here. Who else could be a bit higher? Sidey can be here. I think Bo has the potential to be this type of guy. I think there's a little bit of untapped potential there. Isaac Quainor can be here. Darcy Moore is here, usually. Uh, what else have we got here? Yeah, I'd probably put like Quainor there. Anything else? I think I'm pretty happy with all that. So that's where, that's where our team could be, right? So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. That was a little bit of fun. Uh, did I get anything wrong? Do you want to add to it? Let me know. Go Pies.